This is the Level Up Podcast. I'm Taylor Petrinovich. And I'm Kelly Gilster of 618 Studios. And we are on a mission to help wedding filmmakers and photographers level up their businesses so you can make more and work less. We want to help you confidently take your business from mainstream to luxury, and it all starts right here. Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of the Level Up Podcast. I am your host, Taylor Petrinovich, joined as always by my co-host, Kelly Gilster. Hey guys. How are you doing today, Kelly? I'm good. We are in October now. So many fun things. Officially spooky season. If you know Taylor, you know that she loves Halloween, so I'm sure her house is thoroughly decorated. And I want to say you even throw a Halloween party. Are you guys getting ready for that? Yes, I I'm definitely guilty of liking all of all of the holidays, honestly. I'm not really biased in terms of the holidays that I like. I just really love anything festive and fun and something to like break up <laughs> the monotony of everyday life if I'm being totally honest. So, I will hop on a holiday full force. Um we've already been to Apple Hill, which if you are a Northern California native like myself, maybe you're familiar. It's like halfway up the foothills on your way to Tahoe up Highway 50. Um, It's like basically this region within like a few square miles maybe where there's like multiple farms and ranches and it's exactly how it sounds. It's Apple Hill, like the bunch of apple orchards there, but also like lots of pumpkins growing and just like general like farmy vibes. But it's really fun because they're all these like mom and pop um, like ranches and farms and like little shops that specialize in different things so we went to this place called grandpa's cellar where they have um like a coffee flight so it's like iced coffee cool. the same way you'll have like a beer flight or something it's like yeah. on a little flight board and there's like five different ones and we went with like the um autumn special so it's like a pumpkin spice latte like a chai like all these different like fall ones and my husband and i shared that and the kids got i don't know maybe like an apple crisp or something and then it's great for like especially like little kids who just like to like run around. So fun. And then we went to another one where um, they specialize in apple donuts. So it's just, it's just like a fall tradition that we have. You throw on your plaid, even though it's 90 degrees outside (laughs) during this time of year up here. um, Everyone's sweating. You're like, it's fine. We're eating, or at least it's iced coffee, you said. So they, they, they know, (laughs) they understood the assignment on the weather. That's so fun. I love that. It's a tradition of your guys's. Yeah, so my husband and I have been together for 11 years, and we've gone literally every single year, even before we had kids, so we love it. How cute. I love mm-hmm. that. Paul and I are trying to lean into some more traditions. Um, we're, we've are we coined now that every Friday is sushi and movie night, so like so we'll grab sushi at the same place, and um, our kids love sushi. Like They'll just like mow down a California roll. Like they love it. Um, and then we'll just like find whatever maybe is like new on Netflix or sometimes we'll rent a movie. And we got this like new beautiful couch recently. So we just all pile on this huge couch. It's so comfortable and cozy. And yeah, it's been really fun. Oh, that's so fun. Like what amazing memories. I think that kids just like thrive in the concept of traditions, whether it's like an annual tradition or a weekly tradition or whatever it is. I think that it's just like memories being made. Um, and speaking of uh, cozy things. This is week two of our fall series that we are doing here on the Level Up podcast. Kelly, what are we calling it again? <laughs> sip and tell. So sip we are tell. sipping on, most of the time for me, it's black coffee. Taylor, what do you have today? I am on week two of the chai latte game. I Okay, so what I love about the chai is it's not super caffeinated because I did already have a cup of full caffeinated coffee at like five o'clock this morning and it's 11. I think if I had another one right now, I would be a little jittery. So I like to save that second cup of coffee for like the afternoon time. Um, But a chai kind of like helps me just feel like I'm giving myself a little treat while I'm working um, and editing. And um, so basically, if you're new to the podcast, if this is your first time tuning in, first of all, thank you for listening to us just catch up a little bit here. Hopefully you enjoyed getting to know us a little bit more. But Basically, what we're doing this fall season is we are having more open and candid conversations between Kelly and myself. We will still be bringing on an occasional guest, which will be like peppered um, in between these 
sip and tell episodes that we have scheduled for you guys on the podcast. But for the most part, it's just going to be us talking in a very candid and open way about things we are doing, things that we are facing, challenges we are overcoming in business, and maybe sometimes it'll cross over into the life category as well. So if you've ever just kind of listened to a podcast and you felt like a connection to the hosts, like this is like basically me hanging out with my friends, but I'm just listening to podcasts. That's kind of what we're hoping to bring you guys while also um, staying in like the business world and bringing value. Um, So we're getting a little bit more personal than we really ever have before, and hopefully you guys like it. So it's just something new we're doing here for the fall time. Um, but this week we are talking about basically everything that happens after the wedding and kind of our flow and our thoughts and like maybe some story times in there. So I'm imagining like you just said goodbye to the wedding planner. Um, hopefully you didn't interrupt your couple who's having the time of their lives on the dance floor to tell- say goodbye. <laughs> hopefully. Oh my um, gosh. Fingers crossed there. And you're yeah. now walking to your car. So like, let's paint that picture for you. So how is that looking in the Gilster household in 618 Studios? What does that look like? Yes. So are we talking local wedding or destination wedding? Let's just go local for this one. Let's do local. Mm -hmm. Okay. Local, we are often working at, say, Montage Laguna Beach or Pelican Hill Resort, or they call them, they call them like the big five um, here in um, Orange County. So like, I think that's made up of um pelican hill montage there's a waldorf astoria that's like monarch beach resort ritz carlton what's the five i'm missing the fifth one it'll maybe come to me but there's always valet right so we're packing up all of our stuff saying goodbye to the planner and the team maybe walking with the photographer team up to valet um always tipping valet, you guys. And if you have second shooters, be sure that you're bringing a little bit of cash for your second shooters to be able to tip the valet. Nothing should be like out of their own pocket on that wedding day. And I think it's just a really nice touch to be able to like throw your second a five or a 10 to be able to tip valet and not even have to think about it. So we're doing that as well. If we have a third, um, getting in the car, we are going either straight to in and out or we're going to Taco Bell. There's a Taco Bell, like half a mile from our house so we're usually either hitting up that taco bell or depending on where we are in orange county we know where all the in and outs are and we'll kind of like gauge how long the line is and how late we got out so we'll kind of like decide if it's if it's um if it's possible or if like we have a babysitter at home that we need to relieve you know yeah. otherwise if it's like grandparents if they're at grandparents house we'll be like okay we'll sit through the line it's no big deal we have no <laughs> one to, to really like get home to or no one's waiting on us so yeah in Hold on, let me let me interject because I want to now I'm going to give my input because it's yes. like kind of a stark contrast. Okay. Oh, oh my so, gosh, that's funny. This is like something I probably shouldn't say it to my husband because he might like get offended by it, but I have said it to him before and I'm going to say it to you guys. Like sometimes I'm just like, I need a Paul. Like I need a Paul. Like I want someone who's going to help me with my gear, load it up and drive me yeah. home at the end of the day. But like I'm on my own, I'm by myself. And so it's me if I did work at a property with valet that makes it so much easier you guys but like a lot of times there isn't valet um where I'm working like in Napa a lot of times it's just like self park lot. for the vendors yeah yeah and it's like pitch black in the back of the venue like we're thinking Napa Tahoe these are not like cities with like like the light pollution where it's like you can see where you're walking it is like the wilderness <laughs> And it's yeah. like me, sometimes I'll let my like second shooters go like 30 minutes before me. And like, I just kind of like slowly wrap up. Um, so if I worked with the second shooter, like we'll walk out together. But a lot of times it's just by myself. So I'm like with like my flashlight on my phone, like kind of scared that like a coyote is going to come eat me or whatever. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. And then it's like I start my car and I like throw my gear in the back of my car as fast as possible. This is like I get to the wedding so organized and personal, like per- perfect. And then when I leave, like it's like complete disarray because I'm just like <laughs> racing the clock so I don't get axe murdered <laughs> in the middle That's of the night funny. in the dark. <laughs> I know the venues that you're like talking about up there, like Beaulieu and stuff like that. Like it is pitch black. Yeah, it really is. Um, And sometimes it's like gravel. So like my little wagon for my gear, like is really hard to pull. I don't know all the things. Um, And then I, here's the first thing I do. I strip my heels off. I'm done with those things by the end of the night. Like, no, thank you. And I always bring um, slippers and like warm, cozy socks. 
Aww, I probably I love should that. do like compression socks. I feel like that would be really smart for like like blood flow and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I put on my fuzzy socks and my slippers and I drive home all cozy. And there's no way, you guys, if you're like ha- listening to this with kids around, I'm so sorry. But like there's no way in hell I am stopping anywhere at all on my way home. Like there's no way I'm adding that extra 20 minutes to my drive because I'm already like basically falling asleep at like 10 o'clock. <laughs> I can't imagine stretching it out. I'm a total morning person. Like I wake up and I thrive in the morning hours and in my personal life, like I am asleep, like asleep dreaming by 8 30 most nights, if not like maybe nine o'clock if it's like a late, like wild night for Taylor over here. Oh my so gosh. like <laughs> these like nights where I'm like at a wedding to like 10 or 11, it's like a real challenge for me. And then I live like two hours from both Napa and Tahoe. So then now I have a two hour drive home by myself. So this is like AC blasting to like keep me awake. It's like calling anyone that I can to like chat or if I can't call anybody because everyone in my life is probably asleep, then it's like trying to jam out to like really loud music. And like sometimes I'll bring like a special snack for like the ride home or like I'm not a huge candy person generally but like this is when like those skittles or something like it's just enough to keep me awake which is like yeah so scary like the drive home from weddings is the scariest thing ever <laughs> yeah for me personally well, I know like yeah what that looks like it, you're in like total more of like a remote area so yeah it's way mm-hmm. different than where I'm at where like I'm literally like five minutes from the five hop on the five And we're, like, back up at home in, like, 20 minutes and we're, like, in the city, kind of. You're, like, local, local. For me, local is two hours away. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good thing to point. Okay, for those who are listening, Taylor, what would you say to somebody who's, like, what is considered local? We'll just give, like, a little bit of value here. Yeah, I mean, I think think within, like, a two to three hour radius of your house, anytime I'm not staying in a hotel, um, I would consider that local. So, for me, personally, I get into the non-local um category of weddings when I start doing weddings in Carmel which is like three hours from me or like Mm -hmm. Big Sur which is like three and a half hours from me um but yeah if it's if it's something I can like reasonably do in a day I'm considering it local um but I think that I think that blows a lot of people's minds because we talk a lot about like the luxury market and like luxury is everywhere and like it's probably in your local market and people are like no there's no local weddings within 15 minutes of my house that are luxury. And I'm like, yeah, same. But like, I can still drive to one two hours away and charge four times as much as I could down the street. And to me, the drive is like totally worth it. Um, yeah, that's what I would call local. Would would you agree? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, we just happen to live in like Orange County. So like local to us can be a 20 minute drive from our house, but we had to pay for that. It's very expensive to live here. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think that like, yeah, local can be three hours from you. Anytime where you're like not having to like really get on a plane, I feel like is kind of local. Like you can, you could fly there or you could drive there. Not really local, but like, you know, if there's a plane option, like I wouldn't call local to me. Like, I don't know. It's true. Like like even Santa Barbara. So like we're like a six hour drive from each other, like Kelly and me. Um, a lot of people think that we live a lot closer and we do not. That would be really yeah. nice if we were, but we're not. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't consider me doing a wedding in Orange County or you doing a wedding up here. I wouldn't call that local anymore, even though you no. could drive. Like I've driven to Disneyland, which is like where you live. Um, but like, that's not to me local. Right. So that's like 12 right. hours in the car if you didn't stay in a hotel. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you're home. You're going to, you guys, I'm so sorry. You guys all need a Paul because now that we get home, you guys are all going to hate me. Okay. Taylor, okay. what do you do Can when I, you get home? Let me go first. Okay. So I pull into my driveway and it's the same thing. I just like, I mean, if you're a female listening to this, you probably totally know what I'm talking about, but I'm just like always afraid of getting murdered, even in my own neighborhood at night, like when I'm by myself, like the guys are probably rolling your eyes, but like imagine living in this world where you're just like always scared. <laughs> It really sucks. Also, so, if you guys don't know this, Taylor is the tiniest human of all. She's like five feet barely. Like, yeah, I am five. She's feet a little shorty. Up. We love her. I'm a child. Okay, yeah. So I do the same thing. I like rushedly, if that's a word, load only the most expensive gear into my house. 
at night. So I am bringing my Pelican cases and that is it. Um, all tripods, like even like my gimbal. So actually this is so funny. I have um, like car seats in my car. Obviously I'm like a mom of young kids and I buckle my gimbals. I have two gimbals. I buckle them into the car seats. <laughs> I don't oh like tearing them down. Gosh, that's like... hilarious. Please take a picture of that next time and post it on stories. And then if okay. you have been listening to this podcast episode and you see the gimbal buckled in, please reply to that. Because like, if you know, you know, that is hilarious. <laughs> If you know, you know. Yeah, so I buckle them in and I leave them buckled in overnight. And in my brain, I'm like, I would rather have my car broken into and them get stolen than have to like make one more trip in the pitch black and like maybe get axe burned. So um, it's, it's a price I'm willing to pay. They're insured, guys. I have insurance. It's fine. Um, and it is like, okay, so I'm always working outside in like the dirt in Napa or in Tahoe and it's like wildernessy, dirty. And so my feet are like so dirty. <laughs> so I, I have to take a shower. I'm like so gross. It's where like I kind of do become envious of people who work with like a ballroom and like air conditioning and like you're not getting like dust and dirt and grime on you all day. But like this girl needs a shower after I get back from weddings. And so that always happens. And then basically what I do is I make up my little sleepy girl cocktail that's called a big old glass of red wine and some melatonin. Nice. And I try to pass out as quickly as I can. But like, I like it with probably most people, like I'm kind of still, I have that adrenaline in me a little bit from the day. I'm like going over all these things mentally in my mind of all the things I need to do or how, conversations I had, the social anxiety starts coming out. And I'm like, why did I say that to that person? Like, oh no, I sounded like an idiot. Like, you know, all those like thoughts that come up. So I do all that with my wine and then my melatonin. And then I go to sleep and it's like by now, like whatever, <clears throat> one in the morning, which is like not great for me, <laughs> but it's Because now you're waking up at like 4.30 in the morning because your yeah. internal clock. Well, okay. So I will say if I'm up late enough, I don't get woken up in, by my internal clock quite that early, but like there's no way I'm sleeping past 6.30. Yeah. So I'm always up by 6.30 on the weekends, whether my kids are here or not, which is like a huge bummer. So anyway, that was the rest of my night and I think yours looks a little different. <laughs> It does. And we have different, like, I wish I could, like, drag Paul in from where he's working to talk about this, but he'll be like, nope. Um, <laughs> so we're going through, we get Taco Bell. I am a super extremely fast eater. I have been my whole life. I'm so fast. And uh, it serves me really well on a wedding day because um, I can, like, scarf down the vendor meal in, like, six minutes. But um, I'll probably, like, eat my beet and cheese burrito in the half mile from when we get it at the drive through window to when I'm home. So I'm like already done eating. Paul very much likes to like get it all out of the bag and set it all up <laughs> and put his little hot sauces on each taco. And like, he's more meticulous in that way. And I'm just like scarfing down like all the food. Um, and then you guys, so I, I'll help bring in gear. Like Taylor, we don't bring in all of our gear. We bring in whatever has recordable value on it. So like mm -hmm. our think tank comes in because all of our um like zooms are are on there. So like they've recorded audio throughout the day. Um our back camera backpack comes in because obviously it has like memory cards in it and like our cameras that have recorded things on there. And then our drone comes in because that has recorded things on there as well. So anything that has recorded value comes in from the car. Tripod bag does not come in and our tripod bed also carries our lights. So I think it's basically just that that doesn't come in. And Paul immediately gets out like his food. He gets out his laptop and he starts unloading all the carts. Like he cannot go to bed unless it's a wedding where we're getting home like at 3 a.m. And he's just like, I cannot do this. But it's very rare that he doesn't. Um, all the things are getting unloaded from the cards and then he starts the backup process onto another separate hard drive once all of those memory cards have been offloaded and then those immediately go into our safe. So if you guys don't have a safe, it is so important to have a fireproof safe. You can get them at Costco. We got ours at Costco. It's like a, it's like three feet high. I'm like looking at it right now. Um, it's, you can store personal documents in there, like your social security card other various things. Um, yeah, throw that, get a safe, you guys, if you don't have a safe. It's so great. So we also have a safe. 
Yes. And I think it's great. All it's files great. get stored in there all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you can throw like your memory cards in there if you haven't had a chance to offload them. But Paul's very stressed out if he hasn't had a chance to unload the cards that night. Like it, it just has to be something for him. So 90% of the time he's doing that. If not 10% of the time, he's putting them in there and they're getting locked into the safe until he does it first thing in the morning. Like he just has to do that. Like get his coffee first thing in the morning, puts himself in the office. I get up with the kids and he's doing all that stuff. So I'm based, that basically leaves me to just eating Taco Bell, taking a shower and going to bed. I'm so lucky. I know I understand. Um, but he does all of that stuff and he's just more of a meticulous human than me, more type A. And so we've found that it is best and most safe for those memories to be in the hands of Paul. And he has a very meticulous, um, system on that too. And when he goes through and he doesn't format anything until it's been double backed up onto another hard drive. And then he has a very Same. meticulous system of nothing gets organized yet. So I don't go through and organize the wedding until he's gone through like in the next couple of days to format the cards. And he goes through and literally goes like every 10 clips on the computer, goes through that memory card to find like that thumbnail, that same thumbnail. And then he goes like 10 clips, finds that same thumbnail. Like he goes through the whole memory card, ensuring that we have everything. Cause I don't know about you guys, but there's been a couple of times where like a memory card's kind of like stopped halfway or like something weird happened. Um, and so there has been like a couple of times where he's caught that like a memory card didn't fully, um, download. So he goes through the whole thing. Like at this level, like there's just no room for error. Like you just have to be sure that things are like really safe and secure. Yeah, 100%. So that is one difference. If I had a Paul, it would look different. I, fortunately, I do not. I have a James who does not work in the wedding industry and has no help because he doesn't know how to do any of the things we need to do, which is great. He has his own set of things Skills. I use exceptional at, and it just doesn't yeah. overlap with our, our needs. Um, so I do not, you guys, this may be shocking. I do not offload cards when I get home from a wedding unless it's a multi-day wedding weekend, in which case I absolutely do. So um, if it's, if there's like a rehearsal dinner or a welcome party or anything that, that makes it more than one day, I will always stay in a hotel. So although Napa is like my quote unquote local market, I will of course stay 15 minutes down the road in a hotel um, so that I'm like right there and like it cuts down on like travel time. So I will always back up to multiple hard drives um, files from that day before I go to bed because I know in the morning I'm going to have to like, well, I have multiple sets of cards, so I don't have to format anything unless like I run out of storage, which is not something that usually happens, but it has happened. I shoot on those like 512 gigabyte like yeah. C CFAST C cards. Um, yeah, so I have like six of those. So I usually can like do a full weekend without having to format everything, but dumping footage and files as I go. Um, but I like to make sure it's like multiple backed up just in case. I don't know. I think it's that mm -hmm. smart, but, but that whole next day. So usually like a Sunday after the wedding, I spend that full day. Like I have my laptop just like plugged in, in my office, um, with like my card readers and my different hard drives. And I like, I basically like go downstairs, hang out with the fam, come upstairs, check and see how the files are going, swap out the cards. And that's just kind of like my routine on a Sunday. And then uh, because Kelly and I both shoot on Canon, we shoot on the 1DX Mark IIs and we both shoot in 4K. And so so generally speaking for a single wedding day, like an eight to 12 hour wedding day, I'm shooting between like on the low end, like 850 gigs to like yep. 1.2 terabytes. Right. Um, and so that's like a lot of data to back up. So like individual cards that are smaller will go faster but when it's time to like take that one hard drive and like duplicate it onto another hard drive like yeah. that's like a three to four hour process so that's usually like my like bedtime like I know I don't need my computer for anything else so like on that Sunday evening now I go through and like now that's doing I just like black out the screen like turn the brightness all the way down and like it's just going until yeah. it's finished um but yeah, then everything immediately goes into that safe until I begin working on it, in which case only one hard drive comes out and it's like the one I'm currently working on on my laptop and the other one just always lives in the safe, like forever. And then, yeah, that's how that goes. Yeah, that's good. I, I hope don't this was cloud... helpful for you guys. Yeah, I don't do a cloud storage though, do you? Because I don't. I mean, at 1.2 terabytes and like my internet is already like kind of struggle McGee over here. 
Um, I just couldn't imagine spending, it would take a week. I think it would actually take like seven to 10 days, like to fully upload all the files to a cloud storage. Yeah. I don't do cloud storage either. Honestly, I just don't trust it. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm a big proponent of that. So, um, yeah, I just, we've, we have our tried and true method. It is knock on wood, never failed us. (laughs) And yeah. Okay, so you guys you guys got like total peek behind the curtain of how we run our businesses in a very real way after the wedding is over, but now I really want to quickly interrupt this episode to do our listener question of the day. Um, a little while ago, a few weeks ago, in fact, uh, we put out a call for questions on our stories and we've received a lot of questions that we would love to get to over the next few episodes. And this segment is now brought to you by our course, The Luxury Framework, which is our baby, you guys, we love this course so much. It is a pre recorded 10 module course focusing on all of the things you need to do to take your wedding photography or videography business from the mainstream market into the luxury market in a really confident and powerful way. So, we cover all things like understanding what luxury is and being able to recognize luxury events and luxury vendors so that you can leverage that information for your own business, which is something that most of the competition will not have at their fingertips, Um, how to create a really solid high-end brand, social media, website, communicating with wedding planners, conducting yourself on a wedding day. Um, And we even get into some filmmaker and photographer specific topics like tackling um, engagement sessions or little editing tips to make your films feel more luxury. Um, So whether you're a photographer or a filmmaker, this course is going to help you tremendously. And our students have seen amazing success. We have students have gone in who are only charging a couple thousand dollars and then they are quickly able to triple, quadruple their pricing. We are getting DMs all the time from past students saying that they um, booked their first and second and third $10,000 wedding and we couldn't be more proud. So We truly believe this works and that's why we've made it now available to you whenever you are listening to this. We want to see this in your hands because we know that next year your wedding videography or photography business can look completely different than it does this year, which is so, so exciting. So go over to theleveluptco.com forward slash the luxury framework, grab it today, get started. Your business truly can't wait. And just imagine all the impact you can have on your life, the people who you love, creating a legacy for your family in a really positive financial way, and then being able to serve clients that continually fuel you creatively. So um, I could just talk about it all day long. I'm so sorry, guys. (laughs) No, it is such a good course. And if you're thinking like, I don't have time for it, put put that doubt aside because it is stripped down to pure value. No fluff four hours. You could binge this. Think about how often you've binged a Netflix series and all of a sudden four hours has flown by. Take that time and pour it into your business. It is such a transformational course and we are so glad that you could have it in your hands today. So head over to thelevelofco.com forward slash the luxury framework. We have different payment plans available, Taylor. I don't think we've talked about this. Yeah, we have two payment plans available, so you can either pay in full or you can break it into four payments, which may be a little bit easier for most people. Um, As you're booking weddings, you can cover that payment easily. And we actually, I feel like we priced it at something that's very attainable for um, most of our listeners. And it's going to hold its value because Kelly and I are consistently adding to the course. Just this year, we added about an hour worth of content. And we have pl- big, big plans for it um, heading into 2025, 2026, and beyond in terms of the content we are providing in there. So it's like the course that keeps on giving. So we would love for you to be an official student of ours. Hop in there and let us know. Um, if you signed up, we would love to cheer you on in all of your wins. But we are going to dive into this listener question of the day, which is from Allison Upchurch. And she says, um, okay, so it's a little comment box where you're limited in the amount of characters. So she shortened it. So I'm just going to make it a sentence. Um, How do you infuse personality into a website while still maintaining a luxury vibe? So instead of it feeling like sterile and like generic, I think we see a lot of luxury photographers and filmmakers um, really embracing like minimalism and black and white. So I think she's asking how we can like not be that while still luxury, right? Give it a personality. 
Yeah. Well, first things first, you have to identify who your ideal client is. So if you want a big personality brand, you need a big personality ideal client. And if you Mm -hmm. are um, structuring your brand in that way, you're going to attract that ideal client. And then that big personality client can show through in your portfolio. So it's like this common thread that is woven throughout your brand, but it all begins with you know, ensuring that you are appropriately, you know, formulating that ideal client avatar and in turn reciprocating a brand that is going to attract that ideal client. Anything else to add there, Taylor? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. And I think, I think one thing when it comes to personality is it can feel, it can be more subtle. Um, So I think right off the bat, if you're listening to this, you're probably envisioning big, bold, colorful letters, um, lots of color or lots of like big imagery or graphics. Like I think that's probably what is going to first come to mind when you consider um, a brand or a website having personality. But I would challenge you to think of it in a different way. I think that personality can come through in copy. Um, We are big fans of making sure the copy, which means like all the text um, on your website is very mindfully mindfully Mm -hmm. chosen. Um, We're not just like whipping out a Google Doc and like typing whatever you want and then like never proofreading it or working on it. Like we're going back to like English class and like you're creating drafts and then a second draft and a third draft and you're breaking out the thesaurus and asking people to proofread. So it's like a more polished piece by the end of it. And so I think your personality can shine there. Um, And then I also think not thinking of it as like, you kind of touched on this, but I'm going to rephrase it. Not thinking of it as like your personality shining through on your website. You want your ideal client's personality to shine through on your website. So So whatever it is they're going to resonate with is what you want the personality to reflect. So like, for example, that can come through in like, the colors within the imagery you are creating on your website, right? Um, It can come in through um, font. It can come through verbiage. Like Kelly's client, ideal client and my ideal client are totally different people. Um, And something that her client is going to resonate with and feel at home with, with Kelly is something that would totally turn my client off. So making sure you know who that is so that you can infuse that into your website is powerful. Like my client likes a little bit of sarcasm and quip (laughs) and they're like a little less serious, maybe a little bit more like party girl and here for a good time a little bit, but while still maintaining like family is still important, but Kelly's is more all about like tradition and family. So you have to know who you're talking to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like watering down. I think that's the biggest thing is that so many people feel like they have to water down who they are. And it's not about watering it down. It's about refining and showing up in the best version of yourself, right? If we are thinking about how to let our personality show through, it's like, who can you impress? Like, rather than being at that backyard barbecue, maybe it's like the way that you're showing up at a formal dinner at a gala that you've been invited to attend, right? So like we're showing up in different ways. We're not like a watered down version of ourself at the gala, but it's the refined version of ourself at the gala. And as you're wanting to attract that type of ideal client and higher end client, we need to ensure that like our presence online is um, becoming more refined in that way, but still true to ourselves. So it's a, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like even true for like what you're wearing in your headshots or like where your headshots, like the location that you take those in, like, is it in a forest? Is it in a studio with a white backdrop? Is it in, um, like a Italian-esque feeling like venue with like all those beautiful stone architecture? Like, those things need to be so mindfully chosen because your website is so incredibly important and like every little detail needs to be dialed in at the luxury mark. Like we say all the time, like consistency is luxury and a little hint of inconsistency is going to spark distrust in your clients. So yeah. 
Great question, Allison. We're so happy to bring it to today's episode. And yeah, so, you know, and then we always have that wedding hangover, right? Like I, I can't be the only one that suffers from the wedding hangover. It is so real. Um, I will say though, after having three kids, my capacity for tired has entered a whole new level. Um, so Mm -hmm. I remember back in the day, I may have mentioned this before, but during the 2020 COVID year, we had all this, all these postponements. And then it just so happened that three of our weddings that were postponed in like May and June moved venues. I think they even like had them at their houses and they had them in October. So like of 2020, and it just so happened that it was a they booked on like one was on a Thursday, one was on a Friday, and one was on a Saturday. So we did three weddings in three days. And we had one kid at the time. So Micah was a year and a half old. And I remember getting done with the third wedding and driving home and being like, you know what? That was not that bad. I don't think that like pre-kid Kelly and Paul could have handled that as well. We would have been absolutely exhausted, but we made it through and I feel like it wasn't that bad, but still the hangover will hit us every single time. I feel like in the morning we take things like pretty slow if the kids, if we wake up with the kids um, and they're not in San Diego with grandparents, we're kind of like door dashing breakfast or taking things like really, really slow. We're like going to grab a don't some donuts. There's a great drive through donut place like down the street from us. So we're like doing something quick and easy and convenient. And I will give it probably that day to rest. And then the next day is like maybe when I'll start to dive into the teaser. Um, All of our collections come with a one minute teaser. And so um, I get started on that so that I can deliver that to the clients shortly after. What about you, Taylor? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely wedding hangover. Sometimes like I'm not a huge napper, but like sometimes on that Sunday when our toddler takes a nap, I'm also in our bed taking a nap too with some blackout curtains. Sometimes, I mean half the time probably, realistically. Um, but we are actually I don't talk about it like this a lot, but I think it's fine. Um we go back and forth between being like people who go to church and people who don't. And right now we are like on a really great kick. We just started going to a new church a few months ago that we really, really love. And it's like something that we really resonate with. And we just have been really enjoying it. Um, all of us, even the kids look forward to it. So, um, I'm going to church at that 11 o'clock service that next day, which is kind of nice because it like forces me to get up and moving, which for me personally, I think is like good for me. Um, I almost like forget that I'm tired. And then, you know, if you go to church, usually you'll know that like the coffee's flowing, the free coffee's flowing. So it is. um, And the free childcare is there. Yeah. Sometimes there's nothing better than like, yeah, you like really, you really, uh, I really love those Sunday services because you get like 45 minutes of free childcare. (laughs) It's true. And for me, like, I love personal development. I talk about, like, how I read, like, personal development books all the time. And for me, like, the religious or, like, the spiritual side of things is, like, a part of, like, personal development that I'm also consistently working on. So I just feel like, yay, I, like, good job, Taylor. Like, you're tired and you did it. <laughs> and then yeah. I feel like I leave, I always leave church just, like, feeling so, like, good. Just so good, so light. Um, And so I think it's really great to, like, cap the weekend and then, yeah, I, I do the same thing. We have the same, like, teaser um, kind of routine, and I think it's great. And it's exhausting, and that's, like, one of, like, the beauties of, like, scaling into the luxury market for me personally. Like, so I've never shot more than 18 weddings in a season. Like, 18 is the most I've ever done. Um, this year I did seven, so that's obviously <laughs> a lot less than 18. But it's but I've made, like, significantly more money than I ever have this year. Um But it's something that's really nice is that like cutting down on how often I have to like basically like fully exhaust my body and my mind like through weddings has been really nice because I don't feel any sort of like resentment towards it. Like I'm like excited and like up for the challenge every single time instead of feeling like, oh, here we go again this weekend. Like I'm still tired from last weekend. Like I don't feel that way anymore, which is really, really nice. And I think it's like great for my clients too. Like they don't know it, but it's great for them. Um, so yeah, if, if that like resonates with you, we definitely recommend 
considering scaling upwards in that way just like to retain your sanity if you listen to last week's episode it was like all about how to like stay sane as a stay-at-home like entrepreneur work from home entrepreneur so you're probably nodding along with us right now but um yeah we're just really passionate about like helping people have the best quality life and yeah. business possible and like those two are so intertwined as much as we like to try to separate it it's just like, impossible right totally like there's a reason why those in the luxury market have been in business for five to 25 years plus, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why not many people stay in the budget market past five years. The budget market burns people out. And so yeah. we are here, the whole, like our whole why between the Level Up Co is like what Taylor said, to build the best life for yourself and your family to create business longevity. And if, if you're looking at the writing on the wall, scaling your business upwards into those upper tiers of the market is what is going to create that business longevity. So we believe in you. We believe in your business. We're loving this sip and tell series. We hope you are too. I like I said last week, I think of it as me, you and Taylor all cozied up on a couch with our you know, apple cider, our chai tea, our glass of wine, um, and just like chatting on the couch in my living room. So um, hope you guys are loving it. Taylor, anything else to add? No, just, I want to say we, we love your feedback. Um, please, please, please tell us your thoughts on this new series. We do this podcast for you. We do not do it for us. Um, if no one listened, we would probably stop doing it because it's not just our funsies. We do it for the benefit of the wedding industry and each individual who listens. So if you are not into it, let us know. If you are very into it, let us know. Anything in between, let us know. We would love to make sure we're creating content that you are eager to listen to. When you get that notification every Tuesday, um, that comes through your phone saying like a new episode of the Level Up podcast is out. Like we want you to feel excited to listen. Um, that's our goal. So if we are missing the mark, let us know. But if we're doing a good job, we also, <laughs> we would love um, for you to let us know that way. Um, leave us a review if that you feel so um, inclined. I'm actually going to read a quick review right now. We did this last week too. And I think it's so fun to, um, to highlight our listeners and our community in this way. Um, so, okay. I don't know who it's from because under like the person they put Taylor and Kelly, but I, I think they thought it was asking for like the hosts of the show. So unfortunately I don't know who left this. I'm so sorry, but they said, I've learned so much in the short time that I've been listening to this podcast. It was practically a godsend. I had recently decided that my next goal in wedding filmmaking was to go into the luxury market. Then this podcast was magically suggested to me. Yay! <laughs> Since tuning in, I've gained such awesome insight and even just booked my very first luxury editorial just five weeks away, and I can't recommend this podcast enough. So thank you so much. I wish... Okay, if you were the one who left this review, please let us know so we can give you credit next time. Um, yeah. But thank you. Send us a DM on Instagram if you're inside of our Instagram community there. So, cool. Um, second sip and tell down. Few more to go to round out this series. We love a series, um, our all-star series, which is what we did in the spring. We had lots of great feedback from you guys on that. And I think, you know, keeping a series um, is something to look forward to is always really fun. So. Hope you guys have a great week. I hope you loved this one. I hope you guys are having a great season and it's almost done. We're almost at the end of 2024. It's going to be here before we know it. And we are excited for big things from all of you in 2025. Thank you for joining us in today's conversation. Please help us reach more filmmakers and photographers like you by taking a screenshot and sharing it to social media. And don't forget to tag us at The Level Up Co. And join us again next week, same time, same place, as we continue to level up the industry together. Oh,